The date is December the 19th, 2025. The wait is over. At this very moment, as you are listening to this, the interstellar object known as 3I Atlas is reaching its absolute closest approach to Earth. For months, the mainstream astronomical community told us to look away. They told us it was just a rock, a dirty snowball, a fragment of a dead solar system drifting through the night. But today, right now, that narrative has not just shifted, it has shattered. We are tracking the object live. We are looking at the raw telemetry from the Gemini Observatory and the Deep Space Network, and what we are seeing is impossible. If you want to stay ahead of this developing story as we receive updates throughout the night, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We are watching history unfold in real time. Let's look at the data that has just come in. Just 48 hours ago, 3i Atlas was a faint magnitude 18 smudge. We expected a standard cometary progression, a gradual brightening, a bit of outgassing, and then a fade. That is not what happened. Instead, the object's luminosity spiked, but the mystery isn't the brightness, it is the colour. As it crossed the frost line, the object displayed a vibrant blue hue. Standard physics tells us this is likely ionised nitrogen. We have seen that before. But as it approached the 1.8 AU mark today, the spectrum shifted. The blue gave way to a piercing green, and in the last six hours, visual data has shown a new, unprecedented shift. The green is being overtaken by a metallic golden tint, there are very few natural processes that create a sustained golden reflection in a cometary tail. Sodium tails can appear yellow, but this spectral signature doesn't match sodium. It looks solid. It looks like a mirror. The albedo the reflectivity has skyrocketed to nearly 80%, rivaling Enceladus, the most reflective moon in the solar system. But Enceladus is ice. 3i Atlas is currently hot, basking in the full intensity of the sun, Ice should be sublimating violently, creating a chaotic cloud. But this coma is tight. It is controlled. It is aerodynamic. We are looking at an object that shifted from blue to green and is now shimmering gold. And while the optical telescopes were watching the colour show, the Chandra X-ray Observatory was looking at the high-frequency spectrum. Comets do emit X-rays when solar wind hits their gas clouds. We expected a soft, diffuse glow. What we got instead were sharp, rhythmic peaks. The X-ray emissions are pulsing. They are not random fluctuations caused by the turbulence of the solar wind. They have a structure. They have a beat. A NASA astronomer, in a report updated just minutes ago, admitted that the amplitude of the signal suggests exotic processes. In science, exotic is code for we don't know what this is. If you have a metallic body rotating in the solar wind, you could theoretically generate the kind of sharp X-ray peaks we are seeing. This implies the interaction surface isn't a cloud of gas at all. It might be a solid conductive shield. This brings us to the anti-tail anomaly that we discussed in yesterday's report, which has now been confirmed by ground-based telemetry. The new ARCIV paper titled The Anti-Tail of 3 I Atlas Wobbled Before Perihelion is no longer just a theory. It is the reality we are observing. This massive structure extending for over 400,000 kilometres, a distance larger than the gap between Earth and the Moon, is not drifting. It is oscillating. It is wobbling with a mechanical precision that matches no known natural outgassing. Dr. Avi Loeb points out that a wobble of this magnitude implies a transfer of momentum. Something pushed back. If you are trying to stabilise a craft against the gravity of the Sun, you fire thrusters. You create a wobble in your wake. And now, the terrifying realisation of what that wobble is for. We trace the vector of that massive structure. Standard physics says a tail must point away from the sun. 3i Atlas is breaking that law. The tail is off vector by 12 degrees. It is not being pushed. It is being aimed. It points directly at the galactic centre, Sagittarius A, the same direction the object came from. It is not a tail. It is a high-gain transmission array. Why is today, December 19th, so critical? Because today, Earth passes directly between 3i Atlas and the Sun. We are currently in the object's shadow, or rather, it is in ours. This creates a quiet zone, blocking solar interference. This is the moment of maximum signal clarity. The object has stabilised its rotation. It has deployed its golden conductive shield. It has aimed its high-gain array back home. And now, it is passing us. This is not a flyby. This is a handshake. 
We are being indexed. We are being catalogued. And the file is being sent right now. But here is the twist that no one saw coming until the James Webb Space Telescope uploaded its data an hour ago. The object isn't just passing us. It is steering. The celestial mechanics of our solar system are a clockwork mechanism. We know where gravity should pull a rock. But 3i Atlas has deviated. Immediately after its closest approach to Earth, the object shifted its trajectory by approximately 60,000 kilometres. That might sound small in the vastness of space, but in orbital mechanics, it is a canyon. It implies a delta V, a change in velocity that gravity alone cannot explain. Nature doesn't do sideways. A lateral shift implies a controlled manoeuvre. So we ran the new trajectory into the simulation to see where that 60,000 kilometre shift takes it. It doesn't just move it away from Earth. It fine-tunes the arrival time at the next major gravitational landmark. It puts 3i Atlas on a precise intercept course with Jupiter in March 2026. This is the Grand Tour scenario. Some astrobiologists have suggested that if you were to design a probe to scan our solar system, you would visit the two most important data points, Earth for the biology and Jupiter for the physics. 3i Atlas is visiting both. The course correction we just witnessed was exactly what was needed to align the probe with the equatorial plane of Jupiter's moons. It is threading the needle to get a front row seat to Europa and Ganymede the water worlds. If this is a rock, the probability of it entering our system, passing Earth at a scannable distance, performing a non-gravitational shift, and then hitting the perfect gravity assist vector for Jupiter's moons is one in a billion. But if it is a machine, it is simply following a flight plan. And there is one final anomaly I have to share with you, something buried in the raw data logs of the Deep Space Network. A series of radio pings started three hours ago, but they aren't coming from the comet. They are coming to it. Something out there is answering. The scepticism from the mainstream scientific community is healthy. They are calling it a chemically rich comet. They are trying to fit the square peg of this data into the round hole of the standard model but the natural explanations are becoming increasingly convoluted. They require us to believe that 3i Atlas is a unique type of comet, made of unique materials, emitting unique X-rays, following a unique path, all by accident. It is a statistical nightmare. I want to leave you with this thought. The object is fading from the naked eye now, moving from the warmth of the inner solar system toward the dark of Jupiter, but the legacy of this visit is permanent. We are no longer looking at the sky the same way. We used to assume everything in the solar system belonged here. Now we know we live in a busy intersection. It puts 3i Atlas on a precise intercept course with Jupiter in March 2026. This is the Grand Tour scenario. Some astrobiologists have suggested that if you were to design a probe to scan our solar system, you would visit the two most important data points, Earth for the biology and Jupiter for the physics. 3i Atlas is visiting both. The course correction we just witnessed was exactly what was needed to align the probe with the equatorial plane of Jupiter's moons. It is threading the needle to get a front row seat to Europa and Ganymede the water worlds. If this is a rock, the probability of it entering our system, passing Earth at a scannable distance, performing a non-gravitational shift, and then hitting the perfect gravity assist vector for Jupiter's moons is one in a billion. But if it is a machine, it is simply following a flight plan. And there is one final anomaly I have to share with you, something buried in the raw data logs of the Deep Space Network. A series of radio pings started three hours ago, but they aren't coming from the comet. They are coming to it. Something out there is answering. The scepticism from the mainstream scientific community is healthy. They are calling it a chemically rich comet. They are trying to fit the square peg of this data into the round hole of the standard model. But the natural explanations are becoming increasingly convoluted. They require us to believe that 3i Atlas is a unique type of comet, made of unique materials, emitting unique X-rays, following a unique path, all by accident. It is a statistical nightmare. I want to leave you with this thought. The object is fading from the naked eye now, moving from the warmth of the inner solar system toward the dark of Jupiter. But the legacy of this visit is permanent. We are no longer looking at the sky the same way. 
We used to assume everything in the solar system belonged here. Now we know we live in a busy intersection. The handshake is complete. The data has been uploaded. And now the probe is heading to Jupiter to refuel or to report back. The question is no longer, what is it? The question is, what happens when the message is received? Thank you for watching this deep dive. If you found this analysis thought-provoking, please hit the like button to boost scientific content on this platform. Until next time, keep looking up.